Hi again then guys and welcome to of course another installment of the Beards and Cars podcast. This week though, it's more the video side of things for fairly obvious reasons. This is a a more formal episode of the series wherein I wanted to do a quick breakdown and this has been requested a number of times on the channel, of all of the cars that we have confirmation of, visual confirmation, that are going to be in Gran Turismo 7. Now, of course, we will see more, obviously, as time goes on, in more trailers, probably some screen grabs, that kind of stuff, and obviously when the game actually comes out. But for now, there's still a lot of hype. And of course, this is going to to some degree, add to that hype, but at least on this occasion it is justified hype because all 31 of these vehicles are confirmed within the announcement trailer alone. So if you want to check out these and double check them, all you need to do is go to that trailer. I'll probably feature the trailer in the video, but I'm not doing like a frame by frame breakdown. I'll leave that to you if you want to go and watch the original trailer and do so. But to make it easier for you, if you do want to double check these vehicles, I'm doing it in chronological order. So in other words, the exact order that these vehicles appear within the trailer. So, let's get straight into it. 31 cars. The very first car that we see in the trailer is the Ford GT. Of course, the 2005 shape. You can tell it's not the newer one due to the instrumentation, the gear lever. I'm looking forward to having that one back, of course. And incidentally... I'm probably not going to be talking about most of these cars to a huge amount because, of course, I've reviewed many of them already. So that is the first one, the Ford GT. Next one is the C7 generation Corvette, the Group 3 racing one in particular. And we have a ton of Group 3 race cars confirmed in this trailer. Of course, there are some which aren't in the trailer, which you could safely assume will be in the game as well. And also, incidentally, just before we go on, There are a couple of vehicles which I may have missed because they're very far away in the trailer and very small, basically just a few pixels. So I've only gone for the vehicles that we can 100% confirm, you know, to see the car enough to actually confirm it. So, the Corvette C7 Group 3. Next up, we have another Group 3 machine, of course, the Subaru WRX. Moving on, we have yet another one from Honda, the Honda NSX Group 3 machine. One of a couple of Hondas in this trailer, in fact. Then we move on to a much more recent player, the Mazda RX Vision, which, of course, is very predominantly featured in this trailer. Then we have the Porsche 911 RSR, which makes kind of a sneak peek at the earlier point in the trailer. I believe, if I recall correctly, you see it a couple of times in there. Of course, the Aston Martin DBR9. Again, that one shows up a few times very clearly toward the end of the trailer as well. Also a relatively recent newcomer to GT Sport. We have a couple of brief shots of the Group 3 Mustang. No surprises there, of course. We then have probably the most notable vintage newcomer to the game from the racing world, of course. The Porsche 917K featured very, very dominantly in the trailer. Then right after that, you can see it just off to the right when you see that trailer shot of the Porsche where the trailer's opening up and you can see the mirror around that Porsche. But also, of course, later on in the trailer, you can clearly see the Ford Mark IV. One of my least liked high rollers. I know it has a lot of love. I'm more of a Golf GT40 kind of guy. Next up, though, we start to move into more high roller stuff and then supercars. First off, though, the Aston Martin DB3S. Very close up shot, but you can see from the race number, the color, the rims and the exhaust. It's pretty clearly that vintage Aston. Then, as I said, moving into the supercar side of things, well, this is where things get good, because there are quite a few new ones within this category. Of course, first up, we see the Lamborghini LP640, a fan favourite for sure. I'm looking forward to seeing how that one handles with the newer physics engine that we have compared to, for instance, GT6. Then, of course, the Porsche Carrera GT. I'm really, really looking forward to that one. I hope they get the sound right, of course, and it should be a pretty good car especially if the N-Classes remain, because it's only a 605 horsepower, 610 horsepower car. So for that, it should be very, very good. Next up, we have the Diablo GT, of course, a returning face and a pretty good one for straight line performance as well. Then, speaking of Hondas once again, we have the road version, of course, of the newer NSX. We don't really see, as far as I can tell, any Group 4 cars 
in this trailer. So it will be curious to see whether or not that remains a thing. I think it probably will, but I do find it curious that they didn't show any here. Because of course we have the Group 3 NSX, the road going NSX, we don't see the rally car, and we don't see the Group 4 car. Next up though we have a Viper, one of a couple of Vipers in fact. Once again the road version, the SRT10 Coupe. Then we also have the road going version in a blink and you'll miss it moment, right behind that Viper is the Mustang GT. The road going version, again no surprises there to go alongside the race car. Then we have a couple of vintage Corvettes of course, in fact three of them to be honest. The C2, the C3, and right up close to the camera you can see the interior, the race number etc of the 1959 Stingray Racer concept. Another great classic collector's piece and one of the quickest classics as well actually. Then of course we have the back shot of the very expensive but very good Porsche 356 Carrera where it all began really for Porsche. Then we have just the interior shot of a very spicy potential new vehicle. This one is all but confirmed based on interior comparisons and of course this one was found thanks to the Discord server for this channel. So if you want to talk about stuff related to Gran Turismo 7 or just cars in general, click the link down in the description and become a part of that community. There's like 800 or more of us on there now. And that is, of course, the Alfa Romeo 8C 2900. And if you do some cross-referencing, and I even did a video all about that car, it's pretty clearly that vehicle in the trailer. Uh, new high roller, which is always nice to see. Then, of course, we have a blink and you'll miss it shot of that very clearly bright orange, as it always is in the trailers, McLaren 650S Group 3 machine as well. Again, no surprises there. Then we have, of course, the BAC Mono, or Back Mono, as I often call it. A ton of them racing together, another very notable newcomer to the game. If that's an N-Class vehicle, it's going to be a very OP one, <laughs> that's for sure, an insanely quick car. Then, of course, we have another very, very cool use of that Porsche license alongside the Carrera GT in the 917, the 911 GT1 road car, the 996 shape GT1 in particular, which is the later one. That is going to be one hell of a machine, especially in the road car classes, one of the most OP cars out there, most likely. And it's actually one of the only times where Gran Turismo has featured a road-going version of one of these GT1 cars. Of course, we have the Toyota road version here and there. The Nissan R390 is one of the only cars that kept coming back. And of course, back in Gran Turismo 2, we had the super rare, one of my favourites, Lotus Elise GT1. We don't have the Panos road car, we've never had the Mercedes CLK GTR road car. Now we finally have the Porsche 911 GT1. Interestingly, the road car, before the race car, we don't know, of course, if the GT1 racing version is in the game. It's never been in Gran Turismo, so it would be kind of cool to have the road car first for a change. Next up, though, we have the McLaren F1 right there in front of the Porsche 911 GT1. And again, special thanks to the Discord server and the guys over there for doing the zoom and enhance cliche to double check some of these. And then we have a couple of race cars, the Viper GT3R in that distinctive white with stripes, a Huracan Group 3 in the slight distance, traveling around a corner you can see as well, the Toyota FT1 Vision GT racing version in particular, again, Group 3 car, the Aston Martin DB11, shown of course very prominently, and it's a perfect shot in the trailer to do a graphics comparison, and some people have between this and GT Sport. And last but definitely not least for the trailer, we have the Toyota 86 GT. So you might think there were more than that in there, but of course you do see a number of the cars more than once. So for instance, after the Toyota 86, you see more footage of the DBR9, the 917, the Mazda RX Vision. So of course that's just doubling up at that point. So 31 vehicles confirmed in this trailer, which is pretty cool for just an announcement trailer. That's a lot of stuff, mostly returning faces, but with some very, very cool new ones, of course. So I will be covering this topic again when we get more released about GT7. You know, some screenshots at a certain point wouldn't surprise me. For instance, uh, a new trailer, of course, as we get closer to the time. All of that kind of stuff will allow us to see more vehicles. And even after the game is released, I might even do like a full vehicle list breakdown or something like that. But of course, that remains to be seen. So a relatively short installment of Beards and Cars. But of course, if you want more Gran Turismo 7 content, including some of the features, talking about the hype, 
our expectations, then of course stick around here on the channel because we talk about it a lot, and we certainly will continue to do so as well as all of the previous Gran Turismo games as well, from the first one all the way up to GT Sport. But until next time, I'll see you then, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.